Today we will discuss about the X-ray of three major joints of the upper limb. At first, X-ray of shoulder joint. This is the X-ray of right-sided shoulder joint AP view. In this view, we see the bones of shoulder girdle. At first, we identify the bones. This is clavicle. Clavicle is a modified long bone. This is head of the humerus. Humerus is a typical long bone and head of the humerus is a pressure epiphysis. This is glenoid cavity of the scapula which articulates with the head of the humerus and forms shoulder joint. This shoulder joint is a ball and socket variety of synovial joint. According to the movement of axis, shoulder joint is a multi-axial joint. According to the number of articulating bone, shoulder joint is a simple joint. This one is the coracoid process of the scapula. This is acromion process of the scapula. This acromion process articulates with the acromial end of the clavicle and forms a joint that is acromioclavicular joint, which is a plain variety of synovial joint. This is the total view of scapula. This is body of the scapula and scapula is a irregular flat bone. From this x-ray, we ask this question repeatedly. Now, x-ray of the elbow joint. This is the x-ray of elbow joint AP view and this is the x-ray of elbow joint lateral view. In this joint, we see that there are three bones. This is the lower end of the humerus, this is upper end of the ulna and this is upper end of the radius. By these three bones, this elbow joint is formed. So, according to the number of articulating bone, this elbow joint is a compound variety of synovial joint. This is also a hinge variety of synovial joint. And according to movement of axis, this elbow joint is uniaxial joint. Now we identify the parts of the bone. This is coronoid fossa. This is medial epicondyle. And we know that this medial epicondyle is prominent than the lateral epicondyle. So, this one is the lateral epicondyle. This one is the trochlea which is the part of humerus. And this trochlea articulate with the ulna. So, this is the ulna and this is the coronoid process of the ulna. This is the humer radius and this is the head of the radius. This is radial tubercity. Radial tubercity is a traction epiphysis because it is produced due to the pulling of muscle that is biceps brachii. This fossa is known as radial fossa because during the flexion of this joint, this head of the radius lies here. This is capitulum. This capitulum articulates with the head of the radius. So, in this joint, we can identify that this is trochlea, this one is capitulum, head of the radius and this coronoid process. These are the articular surface of this joint and rest of these portions are non-articular surface or parts. Now, in the lateral view, this one is 
media lipid condyle this is olecranon process this olecranon process lies posteriorly and during the full extension of the elbow joint this process lies at the olecranon fossa which lies posterior of the lower end of the humerus and this is the radius now here this is superior radio ulnar joint this is pivot variety of synovial joint in this x-ray this one is the superior radio ulnar joint which is pivot variety of synovial joint at this joint the supination and pronation movements occurs this is the interosseous border of the radius this is interosseous border of the ulna and between these two border this gap is filled by a membrane that is called interosseous membrane so this is a fibrous joint so we know that this is uniaxial joint so only flexion and mo extension movement occur at the elbow joint now the next joint that is the wrist joint this is the x-ray of wrist joint at first we identify the bones this is lower end of the ulna this is head of the ulna this is lower end of the radius this is the styloid process of the radius these are the carpal bones there are eight carpal bones they lies in two rows proximal rows and distal rows in the proximal row there are four bones now we identify the bones from medial to lateral this one is scaphoid lunate tricuteral and pisiform pisiform lies above the tricuteral in this x-ray we can see this now at the distal row this is trapezius then trapezoid capitate and hamate and this is the hook of the hamate by this hook we can identify the hamate easily so this is the proximal row because it lies nearer the body and this is the distal row it lies away from the body now these are the metacarpals there are five metacarpals this is first second third fourth fifth how we identify first because it is short and stout then the other four metacarpals then these are the phalanges there are 14 in number two for the thumb and three for other fingers now the question is morphologically which type of bone these are so these are phalanx these are miniature long bone morphologically metacarpals are the miniature long bone now the next question will be why they are called miniature long bone because they have only one epiphysis these carpals are the short bones except pisiform pisiform is a sesamoid bone because it is produced by the continuous rubbing of flexor carpi ulnaris in this x-ray we can see another sesamoid bone this is this is a sesamoid bone and in a old person this sesamoid bone is produced this is the all over the main and information and most frequently asked the question in our examination i think it will be helpful for you thank you everyone